Welcome to another episode of GameCube Gallery. This is GameCube Gallery episode number six. In GameCube Gallery, we were taking a look at the GameCube library one game at a time. In the previous episode, we took a look at Chibi Robo Plug Into Adventure. Link to that in the description down below. In today's episode, we are looking at two games instead of one. We are looking at two 3D action adventure games based on the mega popular Harry Potter franchise from J.K. Rowling based on the first and second book and movie, and that is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So be sure and hit that subscribe button so that you can join the Retro Wolf family and not miss future episodes of GameCube Gallery. Let's take a look at these two games on the Nintendo GameCube. So the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox version of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is actually a remake of the PlayStation 1 version that came out two years earlier. More on that a little bit later. And it's not just a upgraded visual version of that game. It's significantly different than the PlayStation version. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the game follows the story of the first book and first movie. More so the movie than the book. It features plenty of cutscenes that go along with the movie as well as voice acting for all the lines from the characters in the game and the voice acting is the likeness of the actors and actresses from the movie as well even though it's not those same actors and actresses they did pick voice actors and actresses that sound similar to them which I thought was pretty cool uh, all in all the voice acting is actually not that bad in the game and the cutscenes are pretty entertaining and definitely Fit the story of the book and the movie. The graphics are, you know, they're okay for a game from that era, especially for a remake. They, ha they hold up pretty well using the HD upscaler that I use for the GameCube. It really cleans them up pretty nicely. I was able to make everything out pretty good. There are some darker sections where it's a little bit hard to see, so I had to kind of crank up the brightness on that while I was playing, but for the most part, the graphics are pretty good. The environments are, are pretty well designed, except for outside of the castle of Hogwarts. It's a little little bare you know, around the grounds of Hogwarts. There's really not much to see there, not much that's that really catches the eye. But on the inside of the castle, it looks pretty good. There's plenty of furniture and decorations on the wall and things to see that, uh, that look pretty nice and, of course, represent lots of locations that you see in the movie. Gameplay in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone takes place over the course of five days and the days are broken up into a daytime section and a nighttime section. During each section of each day you have various quests that you have to complete and they all take place within Hogwarts and the surrounding grounds of Hogwarts. The game is fairly linear. Each day is, very, is fairly linear for the most part. You do have free reign of exploring the castle and the grounds on the outside but you can only go so far until you get certain spells as you progress through the game which allow you to explore more areas of the castle and the surrounding areas. So it, Sort of has, I guess you could say, a Metroidvania kind of feel in that regards, to a degree. Hogwarts Castle itself is huge. The grounds are huge, so there's a lot to explore and a lot to see. But exploring is not super exciting. It is for a little bit until you feel like you've seen just about everything. And it's, I don't know, exploring in this game is not as exciting as I thought it would be, but it's still relatively enjoyable. As you explore, you'll find treasure chests and lots of hidden secrets and hidden routes. And in the treasure chests, you'll find, you know, certain items that will help you but main thing you find in treasure chests are wizard cards which is the primary collectible in the game there are a multitude of different wizard cards to collect which represent different wizards and sorcerers throughout the history of that universe and if you collect a full set on a page it will increase your stamina gauge which sort of represents your health it's that lightning bolt on the screen so that's pretty cool. It's pretty fun collecting them. And if you get doubles, you can trade them with other students for other cards. Gameplay consists of, like I said, taking on various quests for teachers and other students that progress the story through each day and night for throughout the five-day storyline. The controls are relatively simple. You move with the left stick, control the camera with the right stick. The right trigger is used for targeting of objects to use your spells on. Uh, you have a dodge button while you're targeting an object. The A button interacts with things and you can assign spells and items to B, Y, and X. 
and then Z opens up your remember all which of course contains all of your data, the map, the stuff you've collected, all the pieces of information that you found about creatures and things like that. So, you know, it's the controls are relatively simple. The camera's a little wonky. It doesn't work very well, especially in tight areas. And I had one instance where it completely glitched out on me and the camera got stuck behind a wall. Now, my favorite thing about the gameplay in this game are the spells and their use during combat and puzzle solving. And one really cool thing that I like about the game is when you acquire a new a new spell, the act of acquiring that spell almost kind of reminds me of a Zelda dungeon in, in 3D Zelda games. It, it's a uh, it's called a spell challenge, and you have to acquire the spell and then make it through the spell challenge. And it's filled with puzzles that utilize that spell and other spells you've acquired before it. And then there's enemies to fight that you have to use this, that new spell on. So it's sort of like a mini Zelda dungeon that you have to solve puzzles using the spell you acquired. And they were pretty fun and the puzzles were pretty decent. You know, they, they weren't incredibly difficult, but for the most part they were, they were fairly challenging without being frustrating. And the combat is not very fun in this game. I'll be honest with you, it's really not. Especially when you fight freaking trolls. You have to use Spongify on the ground on a certain spot. And then you have to get the troll to smash that spot you cast Spongify on with his club to where it bounces up and hits him in the head. Which sounds all well and good except for it is damn near impossible to get the troll to hit that exact freaking spot and it's so frustrating. First time I fought a troll I almost threw my controller across the room because I kept dying over and over and over. So combat's not very fun. The, all the enemies are pretty basic. You fight a lot of goblins in this game and you hit them with stupendo, I think the spell is called, and it stuns them and then you have to pick them up and throw them in a cage nearby. And what's very frustrating is it's you have to position yourself just right for the A button to show the contextual icon for picking up the goblin. And it's, it's very frustrating because you have to be in that right perfect spot and it's kind of difficult to position yourself. Anyways, combat's not very fun. And I don't mean to sound like I'm trashing on the game. The game is, is fairly enjoyable. Uh, it's simplistic, but it's very enjoyable, especially the spell challenges that, like I said, are like a Zelda dungeon. You acquire a multitude of different spells throughout the game, like Stupendo and Spongify. And off the top of my head, I can't remember the other ones that I collected, but when you collect a new spell, it acquires you to solve other puzzles and uh, go into new areas that you couldn't go into before on the grounds of Hogwarts. So, you know, it's not a terrible game, but it's not a great game either. The music is good when you actually hear it. You don't, there's several sections of the, of the game where there's just no music at all. And it just, it's very, it makes it feel very empty. I don't know. I feel like they should have used the music a little bit more because the music compositions are really good in this game. But, you know, all in all, not bad. But Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is quite a bit better than this game. So let's get into that next. Now let's talk a bit about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets is actually very similar to Sorcerer's Stone, even though they were from different developers, which we will talk about in greater detail a little bit later. Chamber of Secrets is from a developer with a lot more experience, therefore it is a much more highly polished, better video game than Sorcerer's Stone, in my opinion, and many others' opinions as well. Chamber of Secrets follows the exact same format as Sorcerer's Stone. It takes place over the course of five days. Each day is broken up into a daytime section and a nighttime section. And throughout each daytime and nighttime section, you take on a series of quests that require you to go to different classes and do different things. Usually at nighttime is when you're doing the more dangerous stuff. Just like in Sorcerer's Stone, there are sections of the game that sort of remind you of a 3D Legend of Zelda dungeon, except in this game they are a lot better than Sorcerer's Stone and they really evoke that Zelda Ocarina of Time dungeon feel more so than Sorcerer's Stone. And I will say this as well, Chamber of Secrets is a more difficult game than Sorcerer's Stone. It's definitely harder, but it's not harder in a good way. It's harder in a sort of frustrating way. And one of the frustrating things about this game, as well as Sorcerer's Stone, is the combat. The combat is just not very good. It's very frustrating. It's hard not to get hit by the enemies, even though you have a dodge button. It's not very responsive. You don't dodge very far. So. I, at least me, I was constantly getting hit and another annoying thing about Chamber of Secrets is when you get hit, you drop jelly beans and if you don't pick them up quick enough, they disappear. As a result, I hardly ever had jelly beans to spend on anything in the Weasley Brothers shop. So that was a little bit frustrating. Another frustrating thing about this and the first game is the platforming. 
The jump happens automatically when you approach the end of a platform. Sometimes the camera angle is at a fixed angle, which makes lining your character up for that automatic jump a little tricky and at times can be very frustrating. There was one section in the library where I just kept missing this jump over and over and over because I just couldn't line Harry up properly to grab the ledge when I jumped towards it. And it was very frustrating. Another frustrating thing about this auto jump mechanic is that if you get near an edge, he will jump most of the time, even if you don't want him to. This was another frustrating part in the library. I got to the very top of this section where you have to climb ladders, slide across walls to dodge books and keep going up and up and up and I got up near the top I got too close to the edge and he jumped all the way back down to the bottom requiring me to go all the way back up so I did not like that mechanic and again both games had that but frustrating combat frustrating platforming and the frustrating auto jump mechanic aside this is a really good game. It is a fun game. I found myself enjoying it quite a bit especially during the Zelda dungeon sections I also didn't enjoy the stealth in this game or Scorcher Stone where you're having to avoid the prefects. I found that to be very aggravating and it just didn't it just didn't feel like a very polished stealth mechanic. It felt cheap and frustrating and I didn't care for that. But I do like Chamber of Secrets quite a bit. The music is incredible. Much better music in Chamber of Secrets than in Sorcerer Stone and it plays more often during the gameplay. Let's listen to a little snippet of music from the title screen of the game. Graphics are a little bit better in Chamber of Secrets, I think. Not much. There's not much of a difference, but I think they are improved just a little bit. The map is exactly the same as Sorcerer's Stone. There is one big difference, though. When you're on the grounds of Hogwarts, in Sorcerer's Stone, you could freely roam the grounds all over the place, and there was a lot of nothing out there, so it felt like you were just roaming around for no reason. In Chamber of Secrets, they made it to where you go to the end of a certain path and it'll tell you what section of the ground you're going to be teleported to once you get and you walk to the end of that path so you don't have free reign to move all around the grounds but at the same time it's a lot quicker to get from point A to point B whereas in Sorcerer's Stone you had to walk and there was nothing to do or see while you were walking so you know that didn't bother me too much the uh, the broom flying is a little more a little more nuanced than this one it feels a little bit better than it did in Sorcerer's Stone all in all Chamber of Secrets is definitely a better game than Sorcerer's Stone, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. And any fan of Harry Potter, or fan of 3D Zelda games for that matter, I think would get some enjoyment out of this, despite some of the negative stuff that I pointed out about the game. Most of that stuff can be overlooked, but there is a good game here, and it's one that I definitely recommend, again, to fans of Harry Potter and or fans of 3D Legend of Zelda games. So both the Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone remake and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets were published by EA. The games had different developers, however. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was developed by Warthog Games Limited, and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets was developed by Euricom. Now, interestingly enough, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone remake actually came out after Chamber of Secrets. Sorcerer's Stone was released on December 9th, 2003, whereas Chamber of Secrets was released on November 5th, 2002. So this game came out almost a year after Chamber of Secrets did, yet Chamber of Secrets is a much better and more highly polished game. Now I'm not going to get into EA and the history of EA because almost everybody out there knows who EA is. They're one of the biggest mega publishers of video games in the world and they're also one of the greediest video game publishers in the world and they're not very well loved right now. Let's just leave it at that. Most of you know why. Now the developer of Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone, Warthog Games Limited, they were a UK based games developer that developed games from roughly 2000 to 2005 until they were acquired by Tiger Telematics. Now they actually developed several GameCube and multi-platform games from 2003 to 2005 for the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. Some of these games include Rally Championship, Looney Tunes Back in Action, Future Tactics Uprising, and Animaniacs The Great Edgar Hunt. Now Euricom, the developer of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, they're another UK based game developer but they have a lot more experience than Warthog Games Limited which probably explains why Chamber of Secrets was a much better game. They had developed games from around 1990 
all the way until they ceased operations in 2012. And they had a very impressive run of games in their resume and some of the notable games on their list include Disney's The Jungle Book, Cruisin' World, Duke Nukem 64 and Zero Hour, Mortal Kombat Gold for Dreamcast, Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex, several James Bond games such as 007 Nightfire, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, which is a hidden gem and favorite of mine, and Spyro A Hero's Tale, just to name a few. So this was a very experienced game developer with a very impressive resume of games, which is why they were able to develop what many people consider to be one of the best Harry Potter games ever made. Now, as I stated before, Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone was released after Chamber of Secrets on December 9th, 2003. Now, the reason for this is because Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was actually a remake, as I stated previously, of the PlayStation 1 and PC version, which came out in 2001. Now, the PlayStation 1 and PC versions were more of a sort of level-based, lot more linear games, whereas the remake was a little more open world, still linear, but not as linear, and took place over the course of five days. Interestingly enough, almost every version of Sorcerer's Stone is pretty different from one another. Even the PlayStation 1 and PC versions, with them being released at the same time, even they had some differences. There was also a Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advanced version of Sorcerer's Stone released in 2001. The Game Boy Color version was an RPG, whereas the Game Boy Advanced version was sort of a top-down puzzle game. Now with the remake coming out after Chamber of Secrets, it actually took several gameplay elements from Chamber of Secrets, just straight up took them, which include the world map and a lot of the assets and the structure of the world map from Chamber of Secrets, as well as many of the spells and how they function. So they actually borrowed a lot of gameplay elements from Chamber of Secrets, even though they were two different developers, but with them both being published by EA, I would imagine that EA probably gave them permission to do that and gave the okay or didn't give this developer a choice to but to a, allow them to use some of their ideas i'm not sure what went on there that's just speculation but i do find that pretty interesting that a different developer pretty much outright took ideas from this developer now there were a few issues with chamber of secrets that warthog games actually fixed in sorcerer's stone such as long load times from Chamber of Secrets, they sort of shortened those a little bit and a few other things. But they also created their own issues in Sorcerer's Stone as well, including one that I couldn't stand, which was that every time you picked up a jelly bean, which was the currency of the game, Harry would go, you know, ew, puke flavor or yum, curry flavor. You know, he would, he would say the name of the flavor every single time you picked up a jelly bean and you pick up a lot of jelly beans in this game. It was very annoying. They didn't do that in the Chamber of Secrets version. It was more of a sort of subtitle. So I don't know what that was all about, but that annoyed me personally. Now Sorcerer's Stone features an original composed soundtrack from Jeremy Soule, which was actually released digitally in 2006, if you all are interested in looking that up. The remake was also nominated for the 2003 Golden Joystick Award for MTV Film Adaptation of the Year. However, they didn't win. The win went to Lord of the Rings and the Two Towers, which is understandable because that is a fantastic film adaptation. Now, as I stated previously, the voice actors and actresses in Sorcerer's Stone were not the same from the movie, but they had the likeness and they actually did a pretty good job and sound very similar to everybody from the movie. Now, the length of Sorcerer's Stone is relatively short. It takes around six hours to play through. Now, for completionists, it takes around 11 hours to do a completionist run of the game. The speed run for the GameCube version of Sorcerer's Stone is three hours and three minutes, which is about half the time that it normally takes people to actually beat the game. And that's probably because you can't skip the freaking cutscenes, which is another thing that annoyed me. Games need to, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I think every game needs to give you the option of skidding, skipping the cutscene always. But that's just me. Now, as I stated previously, Chamber of Secrets was released before Sorcerer's Stone on the GameCube, Xbox, and PS2 on November 5th, 2002, alongside the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, PC, and PlayStation 1 versions of the game. Now, since Sorcerer's Stone stole many gameplay elements and ideas from Chamber of Secrets, 
they are pretty much the same game for the most part except this game is much more polished and a better overall game but they did both mostly follow the film rather than following the, the storyline in the books so these are more film adaptations than they are book adaptations now an interesting thing about chamber of secrets is it actually had a gamecube exclusive feature where if you had the game boy advance version of the game a game boy advance and a link cable you could connect it to the gamecube and actually unlock a secret room in Chamber of Secrets that you could not access in the other versions of the game. Chamber of Secrets is also a little bit longer than the Sorcerer's Stone. It takes around seven hours to play through the game and if you're a completionist it's going to take you around 16 and a half hours. However interestingly enough the speed run on the GameCube version of this game, the fastest speed run, is even faster than this one at two hours and 32 minutes. Now let's talk about the critical reception of these two games. Needless to say, Sorcerer's Stone did not review near as good as Chamber of Secrets did. The average Metacritic critic review score for Sorcerer's Stone out of 11 critics was 62 out of 100 with 33 on the low end and 80 on the high end. It has an average Metacritic user score out of 9 user ratings of 8 out of 10, which is not too bad for, for user ratings, but it's only 9. How Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, on the other hand, has a much higher average the Metacritic critic average for Chamber of Secrets out of 14 critic reviews is 77 out of 100 with 58 on the low end and 89 on the high end. The average user Metacritic score out of 29 user ratings is 8.2 out of 10. So Chamber of Secrets has a higher critical acclaim than Sorcerer's Stone. It is definitely a better game than Sorcerer's Stone in my opinion and many others opinions and many people consider Chamber of Secrets to be one of the greatest Harry Potter games ever made at this moment and the sales actually reflect the quality and critical reception of the games as well as Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone sold very poorly whereas Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets sold quite well. The GameCube version of Sorcerer's Stone sold around 60,000 copies in North America, which is really bad. That's not good at all. It actually beat the Xbox version, though. The Xbox version only sold around 50,000 copies in North America. Now, unsurprisingly, the PlayStation 2 version sold the best in North America with around 140,000 copies, but even that is not very good. Chamber of Secrets, on the other hand, sold much, much better in North America. The GameCube version of Chamber of Secrets sold around 530,000 copies in North America. That's quite a few. And it actually almost doubled the Xbox version of the game. The Xbox version of Chamber of Secrets sold around 270,000 units in North America. Whereas the PlayStation 2 version of Chamber of Secrets sold around a whopping 900,000 units in North America. So, needless to say, Chamber of Secrets sold quite a bit, whereas Sorcerer's Stone did not. And what's interesting is the fact that Sorcerer's Stone came out after Chamber of Secrets. So you would think with how good Chamber of Secrets sold a year later when a new Harry Potter game came out, people would be like, oh, I really like Chamber of Secrets. Let me get Sorcerer's Stone. But that didn't happen. Could be because of the critical reception. I'm not really sure. Now, due to the poor sales of Sorcerer's Stone, it is actually a pretty difficult game to find on the GameCube, believe it or not. And the price continues to go up for Sorcerer's Stone as less and less copies are out in the wild. Now, Chamber of Secrets, on the other hand, with as many copies that they were sold, there are many copies out there in the wild, so it's fairly easy to find and it's relatively cheap as well. So let's talk about the price charting averages for the cost of these two games. The average loose disc price for Sorcerer's Stone is around $26. The average complete in box price for Sorcerer's Stone is around $36, and the average brand new price for Sorcerer's Stone is around $61. That's pretty high for a GameCube game, so it's a relatively uncommon game. I wouldn't say it's rare, but it's pretty uncommon, borderline getting towards the rare end of the scale. Now looking at current eBay listings for Sorcerer's Stone, complete in box listings, I'm seeing an average listed price of about $42 to $52 with shipping. Looking at some eBay sold listings, some recent eBay sold listings for Sorcerer's Stone complete in box, seeing recent sold listings from $36 to $45, and as I stated before, I expect that price to continue to go up. Now Harry Potter 2, on the other hand, much cheaper game. The average loose price of Harry Potter 2 for the GameCube is around 5 bucks. The average complete in box price is around 8 bucks. The average brand new price is around 27 bucks. The current eBay listings complete in box I saw for this game range anywhere from 8 to 10 bucks with shipping. 
and some of the recent sold listings that I saw for Chamber of Secrets range from around $750 to $11. So relatively cheap game, relatively high price game going up in value as time goes on. So if you're a GameCube collector and you want to pick up a copy of Sorcerer's Stone, I suggest that you do so sooner rather than later before the price shoots up even more because there are a lot of people out there collecting GameCube games right now. So the prices are only going to continue to go up as less and less of these games are out in the wild. So there you have it folks, episode 6 of GameCube Gallery on Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and hit that like button and let me know in the comments down below what you think about Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. If you've played them, which one do you like the best? What do you like? What do you not like? Let me know that all that in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button so that you can join the Retro Wolf family and stay up to date on all the awesome videos that I have coming as well as go watch the videos that I put out in the past. The next episode of GameCube Gallery has already been decided on what game it's going to be on and it is another game I consider to be a hidden gem that I don't hear very many people talk about so I'm very excited to play it again and tell you all about it in the next episode. Until next time, keep playing games and having a good time and I will catch you all in the next video.